Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you so much, Lord God, for everyone that is watching and everyone that will watch this, uh, again, broadcast today. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask that you give us wisdom, give us revelation, Lord God, and give us a greater anointing, Lord God, so that we can do the work that you've come, commanded us to do and entrusted us to do, that work which is to not only reach the nations, disciple the nations, Lord God, but truly also, Lord God, to let the world know that you are the Savior and the only God of this world. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. Well, God bless everyone again. Thank you for coming out today. Today's message is very simple. And it's actually more of a reminder than anything. And I do feel that, you know, God is leading me to remind people on this because we're living in a very crucial time where there's a lot of distraction. A lot of people in some ways are drifting away from the purpose. They're drifting away from the principles. They're drifting away from God's word. Their minds are just full of information that, you know what, sometimes it's hard to tell what is really coming from God and what's not coming from God. And in some ways, that has caused many people to in some ways, you know what, uh, just fall away from the word or fall away from God or simply have gotten cold in their faith. And I want to talk about the unity of the body of Christ. Now, why is this important? As you know, and we teach this a lot, one of the principles that we teach is on, on purpose and vision. And Mike is very uh, uh, well known on this subject, and I think all of us should be, because we need to keep this very clear. Now, purpose and vision is something very simple. Our purpose in life, the reason why we're created is to bring glory to God, right? We all know that. You've heard me say that a thousand times. You've heard Nick and Mike talk about it too a thousand times. But how can we measure whether or not we're giving glory to God? The reason why or the way we can do that is through the vision that God has given to us or his vision for us. Remember, it's not our vision. It is God's vision for his church, for each and every one of us. And that is that the purpose of God, whether or not we're living it or, or not living it, is able to be measured in three ways. One is... Are you being transformed into the image of Christ? In other words, are you going through a process? Is your life changing? Have you changed throughout this last year at all? How, can you say that you become more Christ-like or are you reverting to your old mindset? The second thing is the unity of the body of Christ. We all need to guard, to keep, and to sow, and to maintain this unity that God has given to us. Now, why is this important? The unity is important because the world will know truly that we are his disciples by the way we love one another and the unity that comes in nurturing that love so that we can then do the third part, which is to do what? Go and make disciples of the nations. How can we impact the world if we're not unified? How can we say that we belong to Christ when we despise his own church? How can we say that, you know what, that we belong to this living God when we ourselves are completely detached from the body? In other words, we're not attached to the head, so therefore we're not listening to what he's saying. We're not hearing what he's saying. We're not being fed with the wisdom, the knowledge, the strength, the, you know, all the things that come from the head down to the body. So I want you to think about this because maybe in some way or another you've lost a sense of purpose right now. Maybe you've lost a sense of direction in your life or maybe you understand it but are not practicing or is not being lived out in a practical way. So are you being transformed? The way that we transform is, you know what, get someone to disciple you, a mentor. That's what we have the connection groups. You need someone to help you, to encourage you, to pull your ears a little bit, and to motivate you to continue in that process. Second is unity. Are you unified to the body of Christ? Can you say that you're part of a group? Whether it be a small church or a large church, it doesn't matter, but are we part of something? Are we partaking in that? And are we nurturing, keeping it, and encouraging others to keep that unity and to increase that unity. And the third thing is, are we actually evangelizing? Are we sharing the gospel with other people? So let's start by reading 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12 gives us a really good picture of how to understand this principle. And again, these are very simple, basic principles, but I want to read them again just to remind everyone because I do feel God is leading me to do this. It's like this. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, it says like this, for as the body is one 
and has many members, but all the members of the one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. So we have to understand the body is made out of all of us together, different churches, different denominations, anyone that believes in Christ and practices his word and abides in his words, you know what, is part of this body. Let's keep going. It says, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of, of, of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were, sorry, if the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? It says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the one eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head of the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, and on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffers with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So again, what are we hearing here? What do we see? We see God is saying, you know what? We all depend on one another. When one is hurting, we all hurt. When one is, you know what, joyful or honored, we're all grateful and joyful to see that that person is being honored. And this is why it's important for us because as we understand this, it is the head that leads the body. The head cannot, in other words, the body cannot operate without the head. And we need even the most vulnerable and the weakest part of the members are just as important as those that we think that are essential. So in other words, if you feel you're a weak Christian, if your faith is weak, even more, you're just as important as all of us because we all are used in such a way that we can nourish, encourage, and motivate one another so that we can be stronger together. Let's keep going. Number 27 says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, help administrations, varieties of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, do all gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. So in other words, love is the most important thing. So in order for you to operate in the body of Christ, you need to be attached to the body and you need to love the body of Christ. Can you actually say that you love your church? Can you actually say that you love the people in the church? Can you actually say, you know what, you're willing to sacrifice part of your time, make a call to someone, or just see how somebody is doing? Can we actually say that, you know what, we're going to be praying for somebody that maybe we haven't seen in a while. And let me tell you, we haven't seen everybody in a long while, and we're always praying for you. But the question is, are we praying for each other? Can we feel, or do we still feel that we are one family, still together, one mind, in the sense that, you know what, we have been given the same spirit, we have been given the same Holy Spirit, we have been given the same vision and we have been put underneath this covering of I go by God. In other words, 
God brought you here. You didn't come here by mistake. You didn't come here by error. You didn't come here because you liked the technology. You liked the church. You liked the, the building. No, you came here because God has a plan for your life. And you are going to be a blessing and are being a blessing in this church, in this congregation, in this gathering of people. Because what you have, no one else has. The question is, are you sharing that? Are you putting it out there to serve other people. Maybe you are good with love. Maybe you're good at, you know, loving people, being uh, a good uh, serving people and so forth. But God uses all these things. Maybe your gifts is of administration. Maybe your gifts of, you know what, miracles and all these things. But yet you may have them and not be using them. You may actually have all these things and not be attached to the body. You know what happens is like this. We have a big boat, and the Lord is driving this boat, be boat. You know, we're on the boat, and then all of a sudden people may say, you know what, I'm sorry, I don't want to be part of this boat, I don't like where it's going. So what do they do? They get on a smaller boat, and then they try to navigate by themselves. The waves hit them, the, 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 the shaking begins, and all these things, and yet they feel safe in some ways because they're in a small boat, but yet they're no longer going in the same direction that God wanted them to go. That's why when we detach from the body, when we simply stop seeing that this is the perfect design from God for us to depend on one another, we kind of begin to walk our own ways. We lose love for one another. We lose love for the church of Christ. We lose love for the things that God gave his life, sent his son Jesus to die for. It is for his church. Now, you may say to me, Lord, you know, Reinhardt, you know what? I am part of the church because I read my Bible and I do this. I'm telling you, you know what? Yes, but if we're not attached to the vine and the branches are the ones attached to the vine and then we have the leaves, what happens? We're not getting the nutrients that we need to be strong. Maybe you are a weak branch or maybe you are a branch or one of those leaves that is about to fall because you're not really attached or in some ways you're just navigating, not knowing where you're going in life, not having direction, not developing the character of Christ, not developing more patience, more love and all these things, forgiveness and all these areas that are essential for every Christian to go through a transformation and then what happens? We lose sight of the purpose. We lose sight of why we are here in the first place. And we just begin to live our lives like any other life before. And we begin to live our lives in a way that we begin to fulfill our own self-purpose. Are you, am I making sense? Are, are you paying attention to what I'm saying? Because let me tell you, there's a lot of people right now that are in this mindset. They're living out their own purpose. Because God wants us to keep the unity. And right now, the enemy is trying to do what? Divide the churches, discourage the churches. The enemy is trying to stop the flow that comes from who? From Jesus Christ, the head, into the body of Christ. That's why, you know what, we see a lot of people, you know what, they come and go online. You know what, they're just looking for something, not realizing the way to grow is by planting yourself, investing yourself, investing your time, your resources, your energy, your giftings, your money, everything into what? Into the place that God has given you, into the church, so that the church can do what? Do the third part, which is to what? Go to the nations and what? Disciple them. We need to disciple the nations. We need to teach others. But how can I teach somebody else if I myself have so many character issues? People are going to say, Reiner, you, you talk the talk, but you don't walk the walk. Or you talk about unity, but yet you want nothing to do with your church. You want nothing to do. You don't even have the desire to invite someone else to be part of your church. Because believe me, that's happened a lot here where we got people from other churches coming on the Monday night and they invite people to this church because for some reason they don't feel comfortable inviting them to their own church. Now, in some ways, you know what, it shouldn't be that way, but, 
But the reality is that, that we need to have enough courage, enough love for our church, knowing that, yes, we're not perfect. Yes, we make mistakes. Yes, there's a lot of things that we need to work and, and perfect and, you know what, improve on. But yet, when we understand that this is the body of Christ, that we need to take care of it as such and know that this is a holy body. Why? Because he gave us his blood. He died for us and he cleansed us with his blood. That means that every single one of us has been cleansed with that precious blood that what that was shed on that cross. Am I making sense? This is very, very important. Because if we don't value the church, if we don't value the institution that Jesus Christ has established, if we take it lightly, we're taking for granted the body of Christ and the sacrifice that he made to do what? To acquire his bride. Imagine that. The Lord calling his people and surely enough, we're not attached to the bride. You know, we're somewhere else. We could be maybe uh, a piece of jewelry or something, you know, left on the desk. And like, you know, the bride is going to get married. And where's the jewelry? Somewhere. No, we need to be part of the member of the body. Whatever it is, whether you're an ill, whether you're a piece of hair, it doesn't matter how weak or how important you feel you may are, you may be, we're all important in the body of Christ. Psalms 133 describes it in a different way. And I want you to read this because it's important for you to know this. Psalms 133, this says like this. And this is something very, very important. It says like this. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. I know we are apart. I know we're not together right now. But the Bible tells us that it's pleasant and it is good for the brethren, that means you and I, those that believe, those that abide in his word, to be dwelling together, to be in unity. We may not be in the same place, but we are together in the same mindset. We are together in the same vision. We're walking together. We're pushing forward together. We are together because we've been baptized by the same Holy Spirit. Do you understand this? Or have you been baptized with a different Holy Spirit? Because believe me, we see that sometimes happen. People come, you know what, and they, they speak in different things, talking different things, not in the same mindset, not talking the same Christ that we talk. Why? Because they have been given a different spirit. We have been given the Spirit of God. And we can see God working through us. So let's keep going. It says, it says like this. It is like a precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew or Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. So I want to describe you this. When people in the Old Testament, we see that we get, you know what, that we get anointed to do a specific task, they will pour out the oil on their head. And that oil will begin to come down until eventually it would cover all of them. It would just seep down the shirt or again the, the dresses, the garments they had, all the way down to the bottom. So what happens is that when we are attached to the body of Christ, when we operate under a covering, a spiritual covering, when we belong to a body of Christ, that means that, you know what? God pours out where? He pours out the anointed upon the head. That means that, you know what? Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and Jesus has established, you know what? Apostles, prophets, leaders in the church, and it is upon them that all this, what, anointing, wisdom, you know what, maybe a, a specific gift that is released upon them. And then from there, it begins to spread to the rest of the church. In other words, we have a very specific gift here in the church. Well, several ones, but one of them is the prophetic. You can see it very clearly as we have our meetings. The prophetic flows in a congregation. Now, why is that? It's not because we're more special. No, it is simply the gift that God has given to us. But it comes from where? It comes from the covering that we have. It comes from the head that we have. If we were not operating under this, again, covering we would not be operating or seeing this gift manifest the way that it does, or we may not see it at all. 
We also have a very apostolic gift. And that apostolic gift as well is for us to go and to establish churches, to found churches, to continue discipling, making sure the doctrine is the right one and that the church is not going to the left or to the right or accepting false doctrines to allow for false prophets or false teachers to come into the church. If we do not have a right doctrine, a sane doctrine, then believe me, we will be seeing all kinds of false prophets and false teachers coming to the church and maybe we all might be deceived thinking that we're doing the things that you know what God is asking us when it's not really it's just simply a man trying to deceive each and every one of us am I making sense so in other words the covering that we have receives the anointing and then the anointing is spread to the members or the part of the church or the church that is underneath or integrates or feels part of this covering and that is the Igo Church, our covering. In other words, if you can go back a little bit, Ramon or Lena, you know what? They moved tremendously in the gift of the prophetic. They have received it. And then we, the leadership here, also move in this because we operate under this covering. And not only that, he is also under covering under the North region here, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. They have a covering, and we operate under their covering. And even that covering has also part of an international council, which has also members from different regions, and they operate under these gifts. And that's how God gives them the gifts. God gives them the anointing. God gives them the wisdom. God gives them the revelation. And from there, it's passed on to every single one of us. Am I making sense? So when we despise the church, when we simply do not understand the value that there is in meeting and gathering or keeping that unity at whatever cost... We simply detach ourselves and we begin to lose sight of the purpose, which is to bring glory to God. Am I making sense? Now, look at the last part. It says not only will run down to the edge of the garments, but it is also like what? It is also like the dew of Hermon, Mount Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. Now, why is this important? If you understand a little bit of the scenery of Israel... Mount Hermon, you know what, was a mount that would release this dew and the wind would come and for some reason, again, the wind would come and bring it down all the way to the mountains of Zion. The mountains of Zion were for a reason that, you know what, could not be explained other than to the dew from this Mount Hermon was coming into these mountains dependent on this dew for the grass to grow. So if you want to grow, you have to be attached to the body. And the body has to be attached to the head. If you want to grow in your life, you have to be in a place where the doctrine, the good doctrine is being taught and you have someone to mentor someone to teach you someone to encourage you the bible tells us you know what confess your sins to one another why do i need to confess my sin to somebody else because that is the only way that you will be confronted into changing a lot of times say lord i know i did it wrong but then the next day we're doing the same thing again oh lord please help me with this and we just keep it to ourselves thinking that we can overcome it but no we need to Confess it to the Lord. Yes, that person will be there to encourage you so that you can be accountable to somebody and stay connected to the body. There's a lot of people say, you know what? I don't need to go to church. I just do it myself. I'll just read my Bible and, and tell you I've seen it many times. Believe me, guys, I've been doing this for a long time. And the people that usually do that, they never overcome their problems. They're stuck in the same place for years because they're not attached they're not growing. They think they can navigate in a small boat in the middle of the ocean or a lifesaver rather than a huge, you know, Titanic that is being driven by the Lord. So know this, that we must fight and preserve the unity even as for, through this form of connection, through digital, Zoom, or whatever it is, YouTube, or whatever it is, the moment will come that we will be able to meet again. Maybe not in large crowds, but maybe in smaller crowds. 
But we all belong to a covering. We all belong to a body. We are part of a body that has a function to play in this world. We may be a hand or we may be a mouth, giving word to people, giving encouragement to people. But the truth is that many of us, knowing this, we decide not to do it. Why? Because there's rebellion in our hearts. And God was showing me this this morning. That there's a lot of people, a lot of Christians that are still very rebellious. Knowing the truth, they still decide not to do it. Knowing what they have to do, respecting the line of authority, respecting, you know what, what God has established, they still decide to do what they feel is best for their lives. In other words, they live a self-centered purpose. They do not have love for the things that Christ loves. They love maybe ministry. In other words, they love doing things for God, but they don't love the things that God loves. They love maybe preaching, maybe casting out demons, maybe doing the things, but they don't love the people they're reaching out to as well. And this is a reality that we must pay attention to. Because this is where the deception comes in. Because we feel that we're doing God's work. We feel that, you know what, that we have enough to, you know what, feel good about ourselves. When God is saying, no, 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 no. You need to know me. You need to know what I'm thinking. You need to feel what I'm th feeling. You need to know and receive what I want to give to you. And this is the danger that we're facing right now in the churches all around the world. This is the danger that we are going through right now, that the church is being tested, is being shaken. Your commitment, your loyalty, your faithfulness to the Lord and to the people that God has put you with are being tested. It's easier to say, you know what, I don't like this church, I'm out of here, and drop everything. Believe me, wherever you go, God's going to continue the process and you may end up doing the same thing in the next place that you go because you say, you know what, I don't like this church, I'm going somewhere else. And you keep going through that cycle because you feel there's no love here, there's no, 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 no. God has you here for a purpose. Another example, very quickly, is that, that of the centurion. The centurion that came to Jesus said, Jesus, my servant is sick. Please, just say the word, and he will be healed. Jesus had offered him to go to his house, but he said, no, no, no. I am also a man under authority. And I have men that I say, go and do this, and they go and they do it. All I want you to do, Jesus, just say the word, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus goes, wow, I've never seen faith like this in all of Israel. So he tells them to go. Your servant has been healed. And that's exactly what happened. Another way to visualize and understand that if you want to see not only the miracles working in your life, you want to see wisdom in your life, you want to see prospering in your life, you want to see all kinds of things. And again, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking prospering as your soul prospers. That means that if your soul is not prospering, if you're not seeing changes in your character, if you're still afraid, if you're still fearful, if you still have bad character, if you're still impatient, if you're still, you know what, unforgiven, if you're still jealous, envious, if you're still, you know what, all these things that we all have on the inside, that means that we're not being transformed. Our souls are not prospering. We're not improving. We're not becoming Christ-like. So how can we bring others to Christ if we do not reflect Christ? How can we be light in this world right now with so much darkness? That is evident darkness is becoming thicker and thicker and thicker every single day. But the light needs to be brighter and brighter and brighter if it shines, if it's put above on a table. Where are we? You know, where do we stand in all this? Are we fighting and to keeping this unity and to loving our neighbors, 
Believe me, there's a time that's coming that we, we're all going to be tested even more. A time that is coming that we have to be looking out for each other. A time that is coming that we need to know what is happening with every one of us. We need to know because there will be times that are difficult that are coming, they're still coming. Believe me, that we need to be united in one accord, one spirit, one mind, so that we can have an impact in this world. How can we preach the word of God when we ourselves are not united? Believe me, the world can change if Christians unite not only in purpose, in vision, in understanding that we have been chosen for this hour, for this moment, to shine the brightest. But if we do not keep the unity, how can this happen? How can we accomplish this task of the sampling the nations? If we do not love one another, if we do not love our church, and again, I'm not talking about a big church. I'm talking whatever church you belong to, whether that church has five, ten members, stick with that. Go to the process. Or whether your church has 50, 100, a million members, go to the process. Because it is in unity that we have power to change not only the life of others, but also this world. It is in keeping that unity that we will bring honor to the Lord. Because we're able to measure whether or not we're living for our purpose or God's purpose. Close your eyes. This morning the Lord showed me, as I said to you before, that there's still a lot of rebellion in many hearts. I'm going to share a little bit of my dream so you can understand, maybe identify with some of this. In my dream, I saw people gather. All of us were together. The leadership was there. Everybody's there. We were all doing some sort of an activity. And then all of a sudden, this truck pulls over. And this truck was blasting music, you know, secular music. And the first truck came, and I'll just use examples. It was playing Metallica, you know, blasting through the horns, through the speakers. And then all of a sudden, the, the singer from Metallica comes down and says, Hey, everybody, wow. And the whole church, for some reason, or a lot of the people in the church, began to applaud this man. And again, the Metallica singer just came down. He was bold and old and skinny, and yet people were still praising him. And then he gets back on the truck and leaves. And another truck comes on. And I was like, Iron Maiden. And then the singer from Iron Maiden comes out and I get bold and could barely walk with stone, you know. And, and people were praising him. And so forth came, you know, other singers that are very popular. And yet, a lot of the church was praising this man, these men. We're into the music. And I feel the Lord says, why do you keep putting your eyes on the world? Why do you keep listening and contaminating your hearts with the things of this world? This world is governed by Satan. And the spirit that operates in the air, the power of the air, is the one that leads people to be disobedient. Those children of disobedient. We're not children of disobedient if we submit ourselves under God. But the moment we choose not to obey, not to listen to the Lord, not to do as He tells us, as He commanded us, we become rebellious. And Canada is a very religious nation. Yet, put your eyes on Stop listening to the world listen to me for I am the only one that has the words to give eternal life I am the only one that can give you true wisdom I am the only one that can help you prosper even when everything else is dying and dry around you I am the only one that can make a way when people tell you there's no other way 
I am the only one that can forgive your sins and remove the guilt. I am the only one that can lift you up when you fall. I am the only one that can bring consolation, comfort to your heart when you feel lonely, when you feel lonely, when you feel betrayed. I am the only one that can save your soul. And I feel the Lord says, on your right, you have all the blessings. And on the left, you have all the curses. Choose wisely. For if you do what I ask you to do, all blessings will come and will be, will be outpoured in your life. You won't have to do a thing. You won't have to go chasing them. They'll just come to you. But if you decide to choose disobedience, the curses will come without you even looking for them as well. And they'll overtake you and they'll overtake your children. So choose wisely, says the Lord. Because this is the time that I'm bringing definition to my church. Those that belong to me and those that are not of me. And those that are attached to me and those that are not attached to me. Those that belong to my body. And those that simply have attached themselves. Superficially to me. Because they want something from me. There are many out there that are looking for positions. Many that are looking for glory. Many that are looking to be recognized publicly. Many that are looking for power. But only a true Christian, a true child of mine is looking for me, for my son Jesus. Seek me, says the Lord. Seek me out. Seek me out. And I will change your life. Do not set your eyes on the things of this world. Rather, eternal things the things where urine or the thieves can come and destroy but rather the things that are eternal fight fight for what is righteous stand for what is righteous The Lord says, read my word, study my word, live my word, practice my word, submerge yourself. If you abide in my word, says the Lord, the Father and I will come and make a dwelling in you. But if we do not abide in his word, we do not know him. The Lord says it is not it is not the time to be playing games. This is the time to take it very seriously because your soul, your salvation depends on this. Abide in me, says the Lord. Abide in me, stay in me, dwell in me. To the left or the right. But choose wisely. will bless my body my church Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus we thank you so much Lord God for your word we thank you so much for God for giving us Lord God direction and opening your eyes Lord God to see the things that you see the way that you see them Father, I want to pray today in the name of Jesus. Father, we bind every spirit, Lord God, that has come to bring vision, to bring discouragement, Lord God, from us in seeing ourselves as one body, one church. In the name of Jesus, we bind that spirit that has come to steal, Lord God, identity, that has come to steal the word from the Lord from our hearts, that, come, that has come to steal hope, Lord God. But Lord, we know that our joy does not come 
from being united in one place, but rather being united knowing that we belong to one family, that we belong to a part of your body, that we belong to a church that teaches, Lord God, your word, and that stays on track on the purpose you've given to us, that we belong to a church, Lord God, where we feel your love, where we feel, Lord God, your protection, your covering, where we feel, Lord God, your spirit, and we can hear it, where we feel alive, Lord God, because the words that come out from you give us hope, give us strength, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I come against, Lord God, every spirit of Jezebel right now. Let us try, Lord God, to put rebellion, Lord God, in the hearts of many out there today. Every spirit of Jezebel, Lord God, that's questioning your authority, Lord God. Let us question and put doubt, Lord God, about what your word says. So we're not trying to find excuses, Lord God, for not obeying you. But rather, Lord God, find more reasons for submitting our lives to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I break every chain, Lord God, that has been pulling people away. Pulling people away from you. Pulling people away, Lord God, from the hope and the peace that you've given to us. Pulling people away, Lord God. Into a place of darkness. Into a place of fear. Into a place, Lord God, of self-centered purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we come against, Lord God, every spirit of rebellion, idolatry, Lord, forgive us, because many times we idolize other things, not seeing the beauty of how great you are right in front of us. Oh, how much you've blessed us. Oh, how rich we are, Lord God, for belonging to your body. Lives, Lord God, full of wisdom, full of joy, full of hope, Lord God, full of strength. Full of motivation and boldness, Lord God, to do your work, which is to go and make disciples to the world. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we know that not even if, whether we are distant away, Lord God, just as we're seeing many people, Lord God, gather, Lord God, from the Caribbean, Lord God, from South America, from the U.S., from many places, Lord God, Europe. India, Lord God, Pakistan, that we're all united in the same vision, the same purpose, in the same spirit. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray and I release, Lord God, I release, Lord God, that spirit of unity upon our people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, anyone that uses the Ego Connect app, let that vision come clearly into their hearts. Anyone that watches, Lord God, these broadcasts, let the desire be birthed within them. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us work together a spirit of unity, Lord God. One mind, one accord, one baptism, one doctrine, Lord God. One purpose that we can all move together as the Holy Spirit leads us, Lord God, to the nations. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and we worship you. I want to close with this. You know those Jim Durkin teachings that we have in the app? I'll give you a little history about Jim Durkin. Jim Durkin, again, he's the one that began this ministry of Go 
they called themselves gospel outreach back in the 60s and they started with the Jesus movement from there they began to disciple people and they said in their hearts we're gonna preach the gospel to every creature anyone that comes along and they began to send out missionaries locally internationally and before they knew it they had different churches in different nations different cities and that's how verbal came about but now that he's gone now that he passed away i believe he passed away in late 90s it is almost 20 years after his death his preachings which were able we were able to save them to rescue them have now impacted over 4,000 people and believe it or not when I look at the statistics of the people hearing the, the preachings we're seeing that you know what one quarter of all the downloads that we've had of these preachings are coming from India another 20% are coming from Russia another 10% are coming from Europe 5% are coming from Africa. And what this man had intended to do, even after he's been long gone, he's still impacting lives, preaching the gospel through this app. I want you to see the power in this because the Word of God is forever. The Word of God never stops. The Word of God never ceases to be. It's alive. And it's alive in you. And it produce changes when accepted without questioning it, without doubting it, without arguing with what is written. And the same thing we pray that this app has the ability to do the same thing and to take the gospel to every nation. We can say now that we are in India, in Africa, in Pakistan, in Russia, in the U.S. And the app is doing the preaching. But we need your help now. We need you to share that app with your friends. Tell them to connect. It is not a church app. It's a tool. A tool for the body of Christ to stay together, to stay connected, to receive sound doctrine, and to go through a process that will change your life. Amen. I encourage you. Take the process. Start the process. Click on that Disciple Me button and go through those teachings. And you will see how your life will change. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you.